today we're going to talk about DNA in our podcast. Okay, but before we can even talk about DNA, there's one little piece of vocab that you kind of need to know. So watch this little video. Many important biological molecules are made up of repeating subunits. Such molecules are called polymers, meaning many parts, and their subunits are called monomers, meaning one part. For example, proteins are composed of amino acids, complex carbohydrates are composed of simple sugars, and nucleic acids are composed of nucleotides. Okay, so DNA is a polymer made up of lots of monomers, so it's a big, huge molecule made up of lots of little, smaller parts, mono meaning one, poly meaning many. Okay, so DNA, deoxy, ribonucleic acid, deoxyribonucleic acid, deoxyribonucleic acid. That's what DNA stands for. Okay, and DNA, what is it? It makes up our chromosomes. Okay, so here's a picture of the DNA, and it wraps up, coils up nice and tight. It wraps around proteins, actually, to make up the chromosomes. Feel free to pause this if you don't have time to write everything down. So DNA is made up of monomers called nucleotides. Okay, so nu DNA is a nucleic acid made up of nucleotides. Each nucleotide has three parts. Deoxyribose, which is a sugar. That's where DNA gets its name. Deoxyribo is just short for deoxyribose, nucleic acid. That's the name of the sugar in DNA. A phosphate molecule, just like it was in ATP, phosphate was an ATP, it's also in DNA. And then there's four different nitrogen bases that can make up DNA. So label your picture. The circle is the phosphate. Okay, the pentagon is the sugar. Now this picture says pentose sugar. You can just write sugar or deoxyribose. Okay, and then nitrogen base um, your picture shows a hexagon and mine shows a rectangle. Remember as we just said there's four different ones. So mine's showing the rectangular one, yours is showing the hexagonal one. But for the one that set is the hexagon, you can label it as either just base or nitrogenous base or nitrogen base. Either one's fine. Okay, so Complementary base pairing rule. DNA is made up of four bases. A is short for adenine, and A always pairs with T, and T is short for thymine. C is short for cytosine, which always pairs with G, which equals guanine. There was a, a scientist named Erwin Shargaff, and he was a scientist who figured out how much of all these molecules there were in DNA. And every time he took the DNA out of a species, so whether it was a human or a, a chimp or a petunia, he always found that the amount or the percents of A's always equaled the percents of T's, and the percents of C's always equaled the percents of G's, and if you add them all up together, they'll equal 100%. Okay, so you have a problem um, on your paper, so I'm just going to write it down. So if you have 35% A, because A equals T, that means you have to have 35% T's. Okay. So A plus T, that equals 35 plus 35 equals 70, okay? And so if I take 100% minus 70%, I'm left with 30%, okay? And that means that the T's, excuse me, the C's and the G's must make up that 30%. So I take the 30%, I divide it in two, and I have that 15% must be G, which equals 15% C. So that's the math for figuring out what the percents are. And we'll do more problems so that you can have more practice with that at another time.
Okay, so the shape of DNA is called a double helix, or some people call it the spiral staircase or twisted ladder. The backbone, which is the outside of the molecule, is made up of sugar and phosphates. They alternate, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. And they're held together by covalent bonds. That's the strongest kind of bond. And then the part that we call the genetic code is those nitrogen base pairs, which are in the middle of the molecule, and they're held together by hydrogen bonds. Again, if you need to pause this, you can pause it to write everything down. Okay, if you're ready, then look at this picture here. Okay, so along the outside, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. We call this the backbone. Okay, so it's the same thing over here, phosphates and sugars. Okay, they run along both sides. Okay, and then in the middle is the base pair. So A is one of the bases, it always pairs with T, and C always pairs with G. And it's the hydrogen bonds that are holding to the, them together. Notice in the picture they use dotted lines for the hydrogen bonds because they're weak. And then they use solid lines everywhere there's a covalent bond because those are strong. Okay, remember a nucleotide is a phosphate, a sugar, and one of the bases. So here's a nucleotide, here's a nucleotide. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six nucleotides here, plus those six makes a total of 12 nucleotides. Now, how are you gonna remember all of this? Well, of course, there is the DNA song to the tune, row, row, row your boat. Okay, so if you want a song to help you remember this, this is one of my favorites. We love DNA made of nucleotides sugar phosphate and a base bonded side by side adenine and thymine make a lovely pair cytosine without guanine would feel very bare applause please okay i just sang that just for you of course you could wrap it if you want right chicago all right so um, we'll play with this a little bit next time, but if you want, you can go online and practice. There's lots of things you could practice building DNA molecules, right? So all you got to do is every time you put an A, you got to put a T, because A and T go together, and C and G go together, okay? Okay, next up, DNA replication. What's a replica? Okay, if you think about a jersey, a replica jersey, it's just a copy. Okay, so DNA is always copying itself because every time we make a new cell, we need to make another copy of the DNA. Okay, so this happens in the nucleus during what's called interphase, which we'll learn about more later. Okay, each DNA, half of it's going to be old and half of it's going to be new. This is called semi-conservative. Remember, semi, just like the cell membrane was semi-permeable, this is semi-conservative because somewhat, it's somewhat conserved. Okay, and there's a bunch of molecules called enzymes. They're proteins. They're very special and they help the DNA get this job done. Okay, so if we look inside the nucleus, here's our DNA. Okay, the DNA molecule is going to what we call unzip, which basically means here we're going to break the hydrogen bond between the bases. Okay, so that's going to happen really fast. Watch. Okay, so we unzip the DNA. Okay, and then this little green bubble there, that's the enzyme. Okay, it has a special name. It's called, uh, that one's DNA polymerase. That is adding new nucleotides okay to the old nucleotide so that we end up with two pieces of DNA okay so again it follows the base pairing rule watch it slowly right wherever there's a C there's a G and A's with T's okay so that we get two pieces of DNA So this is just another p a picture of what semi-conservative means. You start with one old piece, okay? And then when it splits in two, you end up with this piece is still old, but this piece is now new, so it's semi-conserved. Okay, so what were the steps again? First, the DNA got unzipped by an enzyme called helicase. Okay, why is it called helicase? Because it's in charge of breaking up the helix. And what's it actually breaking? It's breaking the hydrogen bond between the bases. Each DNA, template, each DNA strand serves as a template to build the new DNA. And that 
enzyme was called DNA polymerase. That was the one that was in there adding the new base pairs. As a result, you end up with two identical molecules of DNA that are identical to each other and the parent DNA strand. I guess that is it. So on your paper, okay, it says if you have one strand of DNA and it lists the letters T, A, C, G, 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 etc., you are now need to write in what the other complementary bases would be. So if you have T, then you're going to put A, and A goes with T, and C goes with G, etc. You just write the letter right down below it. And that is it.